Hi everyone, Joe Brady coming to you from the studio. It's a kind of a pouring rain Saturday all day today, so it's a good day to do some stuff inside. And as I was talking in today's newsletter, I talked about giving yourself a new toy. Well, in my case, what I did was I dug out an old toy. I had bought a set of extension rings for my OM system cameras, and I really haven't used them much, and this is a great day to try it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what these things do and uh, how much fun you can have with them. It's an inexpensive thing to add to your camera. This particular set, uh, it came with a set of two, uh, what is this, a 10 millimeter and a 15 millimeter. You can see they usually arrive stuck together. So this is 25 millimeters of extension. What does that mean? It means quite a bit. You're gonna be able to get a lot closer. And they are very simple to use. These do have the electrical contacts for the camera and to the lens. They are surprisingly well made for the price. This set I think was $26. And there's little levers on the side that separate them out. So typically you wanna experiment with how much extension you need because the more extension you have, the closer you can get to the subject. And what it allows you to do is to use your regular lens like a macro lens. Now, if I look through this, you can see there's nothing in here. This is just completely empty. All it is doing is moving the lens further away from the sensor, closer to the subject. It's changing where it's gonna be able to focus. Since there are electrical connections in here, it also carries the information through about the lens. So in many cases, you can even autofocus. So let me show you how easy it is to use. Oh, by the way, when I'm, when I, while I'm doing this, let's talk about focal lengths that you can use this with. Generally, I have found, oh, 24 millimeters up to say 120 is a good focal length to use for an extension tube. If you go much wider than that, what happens is in order to focus, you're gonna be super close to the subject, meaning like this far away. And it's hard to get any kind of lighting on it unless you get yourself a ring light. So just like a lens, an extension tube typically has a little marker that is the starting point for loading. So I put that matched up against my little red dot on my camera body, that clicks into place, and then the lens goes on the same way as always. So all it's done is taken the thing out a little further. As I mentioned, if you wanna get even closer, you can stack these things. These typically come in sets of two or three. Uh, I've never used more than two, but you can. They're great for getting in close. And when you're gonna do that, it's completely changing kind of the, the feel of the subject that you're photographing. So what is it good for? Well, lots of things. Like flowers are an obvious kind of thing. Uh, anything small that's willing to stay still for a bit, an insect, a spider, what have you. By the way, that's where the long lens comes in. It allows you to get further away. But I just brought a couple of things from upstairs. Whoops, sorry about that. Uh, I've got this lovely collection of kind of artisan chocolates and one of them says lose your soul to chocolate right on top of it i think that desire that requires a photograph so i'll take a couple of pictures of these i've got an old british coin here not sure exactly what it is but we'll see it up close soon and then since we just recently started taking down christmas trees yeah i know it's march but we were away all of january and since we have artificial trees we kind of kind of got nice to just have the twinkly lights on at night. So I've just got some little characters here. I've got Rudolph, uh, Yukon Cornelius, and Hermie. And we'll see, the reason I got multiples is I wanna show you how shallow the depth of field is. So I'll focus on one face and you'll get to see, even if the other one is standing right behind them, how quickly it goes out of focus. Now, when you're doing close-up macro photography, you do have a shallow depth of field and you typically don't have a lot of light involved. So I brought a little, but a very sturdy metal tripod to put my camera on so that it can, I know it's gonna be very steady when it does it. By the way, one of the benefits of these OM cameras, and I, I know there's others that do it, is this camera has the ability to do focus stacking in the camera. I can tell it to take five, 10, 20, 30 shots, and it will adjust the focus up and back and then combine them all in to one shot that allows you to get the greater depth of field. So again, subject for another day, but we'll play with it. So let's go ahead and take a couple of pictures. So I was just setting up a little black background here for the chocolates. I've got my little one here, lose your soul to chocolate, okay. But the saddest thing happened as I was taking them out of the box, one of them fell on the floor 
and broke. So sad. You know what the solution is. Yeah, after we're done recording, this is mine. Oh, well. So with this um, extension tube on here, this is the 15 millimeter. I'm finding actually for something even this big and this particular lens, this is again, this is a 2480 equivalent on a full frame camera. It's too close for this, the focusing point. So I need to actually back off on the extension. So I'm gonna take this again with just the 10, 10 millimeter extension tube and let's see what that does. So again, really simple to do. I'm just gonna take the lens off the camera, remove the extension tube and put the smaller one on. There we go. And then this just goes back on. So now we've got a 10 millimeter extension which is gonna allow me to back off a little bit, have a little less magnification so that it can actually get the entire piece in. I was shooting down on this, um, like this instead. Let's see how that looks. I might wanna go a little bit flatter. Flat worked for when we were photographing the little uh, characters. Oh yeah, I think this is gonna work nicely. Let's see. Let's see. So I wanted to get a little more depth of field here. I went, I'm at, I'm at 1600 ISO because I'm not using any lights. I do have a ring light subject for another day. Uh, but I just wanted to see how well I can do. Now, even there, I can't focus from this far away. And that's as far away as I am. So I need to get in closer. So if I come down to about, oh, let's say here. Let's see if I can focus now. There we go. Now we've got focus. So I'm at a sixth of a second at F14 at 1600 ISO. And that sounds really high ISO, but for stuff like this, it actually works fine. I've got a two second timer on, so I can hit my shutter and then let go. Takes the picture, beautiful. Now, if I intentionally want a much shallower depth of field, let's do that. I'm gonna bring my shutter speed up. I'm gonna open up the camera to say, oh, we're fi at five, six now and five, six and a 30th of a second. Technically with this camera, I could actually handhold this. By the way, when I'm doing this, I also prefer not to use automatic focus. Yes, it can do it. But when you're doing really close macro stuff, using focus peaking allows you to see exactly where on the object is in the sharpest focus. So as I spin my focus dial, I see this yellow in and out that shows me where on the piece the focus is. So I'm gonna go right for the top part closest to me. So again, now we're at five, six here. And yeah, what should happen is as it gets down to the bottom and the back of the piece, it should start to go out of focus if that's the look you're going for. I'll show them both to you and we'll take a look. So it looks like the answer for something this big if you wanna capture the whole thing. And I am at, again, let me see what I'm at. I'm at 80 millimeters. Um, so I generally find a little bit longer focal length is handier than the up close unless you're going in super close you want one-to-one -one magnification or even more let's do that on the coin and see how that works okay let's see how the coin looks what is this again this is two two pence so we'll put that on here and again normally if i was going to do this seriously i'd bring out my my ring light which allows me to uh, have much greater depth of field and get closer. Let's see if this is close enough for the coin. So I'll go ahead and focus here. And again, I get to see my focus peaking on the back of the camera. I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, focus peaking, exposure looks pretty good. And okay, very simple to do. And it got, that got pretty close. The answer is that something in the 24 to 120 millimeters is going to be, I think, a prime focal length for being able to do close-up photography of small objects. And it's a great little tool, and it's fun to play with. You get to really create some interesting things. I think I'm going to take a couple more shots. I'm going to see if I can get something with the coin, one of the chocolates, and one of the Rudolph characters on this little black cinefoil background. So let's give it a try. In any case, hope you enjoyed the photos. Again, you deserve a toy. You don't have to spend a lot of money to have a lot of fun. So go for it. I've got my extension tubes. I'm going to see what else I can find around the house to take pictures. Thanks for joining me. I will see you online again soon. Till next time, be well. Bye-bye.